trauma in children um, oftentimes is not really trauma in children. It is children who live in, under conditions where there are no adults around to help them to manage their effect. And so what's important here is that there's a difference between being traumatized, i.e. having the memory of a particular incident stuck on your mind, versus being a person who grows up in a constant state of not feeling safe and not being taken care of in the context of disorganized attachment. This is where it starts. Our brains are organized in order to be part of a community. We are communal creatures. We don't exist as individuals. If we are raised in isolation from other creatures, we die and our brains don't grow. And in my new book, I have a very lengthy discussion about what happens to brains that don't get seen and that don't get noticed. So the vast majority of the traumatized kids who we see are in fact kids terrible things have happened to them, but what is most important is that they did not have caregivers at some point in their lives who were, who were able to say, I'll take over for you, I'll make sure you're okay, let me give you a hug, let me hold you, let me rock you, let me take care of you until you feel calm. Uh, so we regulate each other and particularly when you're a small child you have your temper tantrums and you have your upsets and you have your misery and you have a catastrophe and hopefully you have an adult who says to you it's okay baby i know you're upset but i know what i'm doing and that sense of having somebody in your life who takes care of things where you cannot handle it yourself becomes internalized and you start having a sense inside that things will be okay because mommy or daddy or somebody is around to make things okay and that becomes internalized but if you grow up in situations where when you got upset your parents get triggered and they become more upset than you then you cannot count on anybody else to help you to deal with your affect and you are thrown upon yourself to take care of yourself and that's where all these behaviors eating disorders self-cutting later on drug abuse um, addictions are most of them have their root not so much in trauma but in disrupted attachment namely not internalizing this sense of we together can regulate each other and so this is the basis of how we work with traumatized kids is to internalize a sense of self-regulation and the way you do that is to maybe begin to toss a ball at a kid so the kid has to pay attention to another person besides them and maybe you can get a rhythm going or you play a game together and you have to move in turn and you learn to adjust your rhythms to the rhythms of other people and so this adjustment of rhythms of moving together um, tossing things together singing together making noises together uh, throwing things up running together um, all these things re-establish rhythms and the re-establishment of rhythms is the core of treating these disrupted kids if you don't treat that they'll continue to be disruptive for the rest of their lives. Their brain may grow a little bit so they may be able to learn a skill, but as adults they will continue to be dysregulated and have a biology that is out of sync with the biology of people around them. So what do we do with kids? We put them in a sensory integration room. In our clinic we call it a smart room. And in the smart room, they learn to feel sensations in their bodies. And somebody is there with them and they learn to feel themselves and to notice themselves. Because feeling yourself and noticing yourself is a function about people seeing you and noticing you. We get to know ourselves because other people know us. When nobody knows us, we don't know ourselves. And we'll talk a lot about it in the course itself.